Hello YouTube, I'm Zach, you're watching Zach DTV. This is your spot for interesting news from around the net. Remember, if you like what I do, go ahead and click subscribe. Other than that, let's get right into it. The other day I was talking about how poachers were using conservationist geotags to track down animals and murder them as poachers. We recently had something absolutely brazen happen in France. There's a five-year-old male rhino named Vince, and Monday night he was murdered in the Thory Zoo. That's in a suburb right outside of Paris. Poachers snuck in and shot him, then took a chainsaw and removed one of his horns. It looks like they were partway through the other one, they got spooked or whatever, and they took off. There were two other rhinos in that enclosure. They're both okay. It really makes you wonder, though, there are five people that live in that park full-time, and no one heard this happening. You gotta wonder if it was an inside job. Rhino horn is worth more than its weight in gold. There's estimates that that horn alone was worth about 60,000 pounds and about $75,000. So you can see why people without scruples would do this. But hey, sometimes your morals are more important than money, at least in my opinion. Well, let's step right from that to something a little bit better, a little bit more fun. Playing off all the internet memes about how don't be a yellow starburst, be a pink one, that kind of stuff. Starburst has decided that they are going to put out packs of purely pink candies. That's right, if pink is your favorite, here's your chance to go buy bags that are nothing but. I mean, pink is supposedly strawberry. I'm not sure exactly what flavor it truly is, but it is good. They're going to be releasing them in April, and it's going to be a limited time promotion. My question for you, though, is what's your favorite Starburst? And why are they hating on all the other flavors? Personally, I'd like a bag of orange. I'll tell you what, I'm going directly from pink Starburst to pink water. Residents in Onaway, Canada woke to the site that looked like something straight out of the second Ghostbusters movie. When they ran their water, they found it was bright pink. Yeah, look at that photo. It looks like the slime from the Ghostbusters movie, doesn't it? It was not poisonous. It was the after effect of water line maintenance done to the city's water supply. They just didn't properly purge the system when they were done. Residents ended up with this. The color was from potassium permanganate. This is a chemical that's used to remove the rotten egg smell from well water. It removes magnesium and iron out of the water system. Like I said, not poisonous, can cause skin irritation. In the long run, there's no problems. I just thought it was pretty neat to see a sink full of pink water. And it gave me a chance to make a Ghostbusters reference. Up next, I want to talk about something. This story's a little bit old. I just came across it. Uh, one of my sources from back in February, February 1st, in fact. But I found it pretty interesting. It's a look at politics and human sexual perception. And it really makes you wonder how much sex plays a role in the way we vote. Professor Maria Guadalupe, she's with the college Inset. she pondered this back in October when she was watching the Trump Clinton debates. So she thought she'd give it a try. She got a hold of Joe Salvatore. He's with NYU. He's a professor there. And they put together a play called Her Opponent where they took Trump and Clinton debates and swapped the genders. They had an actor play the role of Hillary and an actress play the role of Trump. They gave him different names, but they used all the same lines, same body gestures, same stances, same everything. These actors rehearsed until they were able to put this on in front of a screen showing Hillary and Trump, and they are mirroring their movements nearly perfect. Now, as you can tell by the name of this play, Maria and Joe are both very liberal professors. They were Hillary supporters and they thought they would be outraged by what they found. They thought they would be able to be disgusted at people because now the male Hillary would be more likable and people wouldn't like the female Trump. They expected that Trump supporters would just fly off the handle because women aren't allowed to talk that, even though they're the same things that Trump was saying. Well, as they were rehearsing, they found something pretty unsettling happen. Their preconceived notions were totally changing. They put the play on twice for two separate audiences and they found it was the same case for their audience members. The play was put on in New York City to small groups of people, mostly from the academic community. These people were given two surveys, one to take before to see what they thought, how they felt, and one to take afterward to document how they felt after seeing the differences. They also did an open mic question and answer with the cast, the members of the audience, just to see what everybody thought. In the after show surveys, they found most people couldn't find a reason to like the male version of Hillary Clinton. They also found that in situations where they thought the real life Trump was making mistakes, floundering a little bit, making an ass out of himself, when they were performed by a female, they were seen more favorably. People in the audience were even visibly shaken by their own response to this. According to Salvatore, there was a guy a few rows in front of me, literally holding his head in his hands, and the person with him was rubbing his back. That's how disturbed some people were to see their preconceived notions challenged this way. The consensus boils down to when the audience members saw a man act like Hillary, he was conceived to be fake, a plastic politician. One guy even said he had a punchable face and couldn't be trusted. And when the woman channeled Trump, they say they understood the message better. And according to Salvatore, he heard a lot of people say that now I understand how this happened, referencing Trump 
winning the election. I personally found this pretty interesting, and it's definitely a look into the reasons why people voted the way they did, and how based on somebody's sex, we have this prejudice as to who we think we can trust or support. They didn't really go into how this made Trump supporters feel. I assume there weren't a lot of Trump supporters in the audience, just because, like I said, it was a very liberal crowd, but I have to wonder how it would have affected them. Would they have been more likely to approve of the man playing Hillary, or would they have followed with what they state their beliefs are and supported the female then? Of course, I'm going to put a link in the description to all my sources, and you really should check it out yourself. Pretty interesting to see. Finally, I'm going to wrap this up with a piece that kind of made me feel good today. You guys know what they say about people with big feet, right? They have big shoes. That is a problem for Brock Brown out of Michigan. Brock has Soto syndrome, or cerebral gigant, or or cerebral gigant. Blah, 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 blah. At 19 years old, this guy is seven foot eight and wears a size 28 shoe. You can imagine shoes that size are hard to find, and his custom-made ones have been running about four to five hundred dollars a pair. There's a new company called Feet. So I'm going to link to them in the description, and they make custom 3D printed shoes. All you do is take a photo of your feet with their app, and they can print your shoes. They custom made his shoes for free. They say it's the biggest pair they ever made, and they're excited to give it a try. He says he loves them, and they're really not that bad looking as far as footwear goes. Compared to the four to five hundred dollars he was paying for shoes, you can get pairs of these from about ninety nine dollars all the way up to two hundred and fifty bucks a pair. It's pretty funny. They're company slogan is they have 7 billion sizes available. I don't know, I think one day I might try these out. They look like pretty comfy shoes. And on that note, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for stopping in today. Remember, if you like what I do, your friends might too. Share me around with everybody. There's plenty of me to go around. And I'm here Monday through Friday, bringing you the most interesting news I could find on the net. Thanks for stopping in, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.